welcome back to the last part of the Japan vlogs. We're currently on the bullet train heading up from Kyoto to Tokyo. So of course we have our bento boxes. I got karage and my friend got some Korean food because we were craving it. We arrived at Yokohama first. I totally forgot that we actually stopped by Yokohama on the way back up. So as you can see, it's a pier city and we're just walking by. We'll be visiting this later. It's one of their main tourist attractions called the Red Brick Warehouse. They also have an amusement park as you can see. So we've made it to the Cup Noodle Museum. So outside they have this Rube Goldberg machine, which is basically a contraption or a process that happens on its own. So we're inside and this is actually a timeline of all of the different cup noodles that they were selling throughout the decades. And I'm not sure what all those signatures are, but this is the founder of the original cup noodle. Yeah, and I zoom in in case you, you didn't get the message. And as they're going through the timeline of how the cup noodle came to be, they had these really cute diagrams of the founder of the cup noodle. just doing somersaults and handstands trying to figure out how that he was actually going to package this and you can see that they packaged this upside down which is really ingenious and helps to make sure that everything is staying fresh and that the broth or like your hot water seeps all the way down to be honest i don't know why this is relevant to the cup noodle museum but it's cool some shadow art and this is basically a projection of how the inventor of the cup noodle um, got his idea. It's because he saw all of those long lines for ramen stands and he thought there must be a better way of being able to have ramen without having to wait in these long lines and something that you could do at home. And so because of him, people were able to eat at home. This is a full-scale replica of the inventor's house or tool shed, I guess, if you want to call it like that. And then on the side, as you can see, that there's some chickens. And then he had a bike. And if you didn't know, Japan also is very well known for creating 3D models of food. So whenever you see food dishes outside, it's actually made by gelatin and silicone, I believe. I'll put a video here. It's actually very cool to see a master at work. They even had a virtual pot bubbly. Here's the founder with other inventors. And in the Cup Noodle Museum, they have a lunch place with, oh, I'm, I'm so bad at Zoomie. Um, but as you can see, they're all different noodles from across the world. And so this noodle bazaar features the various noodles that are known. And they mainly focus on Asian cuisines, such as uh, ramen for Japan and naengmyeon or cold buckwheat noodles for Korea. And then the inside is decorated like a traditional Asian market. And then on the way out, you can see, okay, Jess, you, you need to figure out how to zoom. But this is just a very cute replica. This is their mascot of the cup noodles. And now we're in the gift shop. I really like these keychains because they were in the same font as a cup noodle font. I picked out K for cook for my dog's name. The main attraction of the museum is actually customizing your own cup noodle. So here's a video of people doing that. Make sure you get tickets because we didn't have tickets so we weren't able to do it. On the way back, we stopped by the Red Brick Warehouse. This may not seem as interesting to Americans because we have some of these in piers, but in Japan, you really don't see buildings like this. This was a very fun shop inside the Red Brick Warehouse. It's all American themed. Who knew that they found all of this so interesting to them? And that's how we closed out day one at Yokohama. The next morning, we headed over to Chinatown, which is actually the biggest Chinatown in Japan. I'm so sorry about all these blinking lights. And because we are in Chinatown, we wanted to get non-Japanese food, so we decided for dim sum. All of this was very delicious. This is shumai. And then they're known for these custard buns that are in the shape of pigs. There's the custard inside. Very delicious, but also very hot, so be careful. Honestly, everything that we got was so delicious and a very well-needed break from all the Japanese food that we were eating. This restaurant in particular is known for these crispy pork buns. Thank you so much to Jen for opening this up while it's extremely hot, so you can see that she's trying not to touch it. Thank you, you know, it's for the shot. But there's the pork bun, absolutely delicious. Another shot of me eating it with chopsticks because it was hot. And it's not dim sum unless you eat an egg custard to finish it off. 
Afterwards, we walked around some more in Chinatown. You'll see that there's a lot of fortune tellers, but unfortunately, it's not in English. Oh, 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 dragon, I guess. Um, and then, oh, anytime fitness. Yeah, you would see a lot of American branded gyms in Japan. Quick transition, we're back in Tokyo and it's still raining here. For dinner, we stopped by Ichiran Ramen. They're known for these single ramen boots where you order from a vending machine and then you don't even have to interact with the staff or anyone around you. So this is what each of those wooden panels say. The back side had English, which was very necessary. There's a call button that you press and then you can just show them these wooden panels to the staff. And the staff is behind that screen right in front of me. Here is the ramen. The camera picks it up really well. And then of course, you can't forget about the egg. This is the next morning, and as you can see, the rain has finally stopped in Tokyo. And the view is amazing. You can kind of see Tokyo Tower right there, peeking up out of that building. At the Yokohama Hotel, they gave us these famous like chestnut pastries. So I had it for breakfast and it was pretty yummy. Uh, this is Shibuya Crossing, and as you can see, there's not as many people because it's during the weekday. There's a Krispy Kreme. <laughs> and a few streets off of Shibuya Crossing, we finally made it to our lunch place. This restaurant is absolutely amazing. Would 100% recommend coming. There's a little courtyard here with a frog statue. Oh, yo, hello. <laughs> Just make sure you enter through the right door. Otherwise, you might be going into the courtyard, which you're not supposed to be doing. This restaurant is pretty popular for business lunches. So we saw a lot of employees coming out here with their business partners for lunch. They are known for their soba sets. They're also known for their rice bowl or more specifically their wagyu bowl. We also got tamago or egg to start off with. This is basically a Japanese omelet and it's so fluffy and steamy and just look at that wiggle, that balance. Jen got the soba set. This is dipping soba, so it's not already inside the sauce. There's her garnishes, and it also comes with a small wagyu bowl as well. Inside is where the, uh, the soba broth is. So here she is, dipping it in. Yummy. And then I got the wagyu bowl. And this, oh my god, this, this was the best meal I've ever had in my entire life. Jen even gets a smaller version of it. Oh my god, <laughs> I, I did not learn how to zoom properly. But make sure you just put on all the garnishes to make it extra tasty. Since we were already in Shibuya, we decided to do some shopping here. This is Loft, which is a huge superstore. And by superstore, they have everything from cosmetics to stationery, clothes, plushies, stickers as you can see, more stickers. This was a fun card set because they have one for every single birthday. So here I am trying to find my birthday. Not, no, not 421. Oh, struggling a little bit. 420! Yes, my birthday is on 420. Here are some more cards in the stationery section. Oh, they're just so cute. On another floor, they had kitchen utensils and supplies such as these Mount Fuji inspired cups. They have these very cute bento boxes. This brand, Brunch Brother, seems to be very popular and they're also known for this silly toast. I also found these 3D animal cups. A little unsettling to be honest. Less cute, more creepy. At first glance, I thought this was cigarettes, which is kind of alarming because they're not supposed to be selling them like this. But on closer glance, this is actually matcha. So the packaging just makes it look like tobacco products, but they're all just matcha packets. Look at this very cute mold. It's a cat. And then they even have like a bigger cat mold. These are sauna hats. I have no idea what you're supposed to do or why you wear them, but they were fun. This is a pasta towel, which I just found so funny. Like, look, this is what you're supposed to do. <laughs> and then they even show you the water pressure of these sink heads, which is very helpful. And then on the top floor, they had more character mascots. Japan just loves Snoopy to an extreme amount. But honestly, who could blame them because Snoopy's so adorable. They also had these fun Lego-esque sets. And then this guy was my favorite. He's called Wolf Kun. Before dinner, we were craving some spicy food, so Jen found this restaurant. 
It was very nice of them to give us all a hair tie if you have long hair and a bib. And at first, you might be thinking, this doesn't look spicy at all. So you put some vinegar on top and then this is chili oil. But it still doesn't look that spicy, right? Surprise! The spiciness is all at the bottom, so you really need to make sure you mix it well. This is the next day. We're heading out to do some more shopping. We headed to the Uniqlo flagship store in Ginza, and it was near White Day, which is on 314, and so they had all of these flowers that you could buy. So in some Asian countries, Valentine's Day is actually when the woman gives the men Valentine's Day gifts, and then White Day, which is a month later, is when the guys give the women gifts. Afterwards, we headed over to Turret Coffee, which is a very well-known coffee place. I got their sea salt caramel latte and it was absolutely delicious. I also just love the positivity of this sign. And then last year, they went on a pop-up to New York City and LA. This is a paper calendar where they show when they're open and closed. And if you plan on visiting, come when it opens at 7 or after 3 p.m. This was my latte and it was delicious. Not too salty, not too sweet. And the barista is an award-winning barista, so the latte art is impeccable. Jen got the matcha. Here we are, trying out our drinks. Yum, yeah. <laughs> Aww, we're so cute. Oh my god, we're so cute. Afterwards, we stopped by this bakery for bread, and it's just so funny because it's in front of that exercise sign. They only have a couple of options, but honestly, that's how you know a bakery is good. Here, the worker is taking off the excess butter at the bottom of each of the loaves. Tap, tap. This is a different type of loaf that they make for more of their sandwiches. And just look at that skill. That precision with that spatula. More bread baking, a different type of loaf, and then if you remember how much bread she was putting in, like this is already half empty by the time we got to the front of the line. And here's the salt bread. This is what they're most well known for. For dinner, we decided to splurge a little bit and book an omakase place. To be honest, I will not remember the types of fish that we got. Here is just a food montage. The nigiri was very good. Absolutely delicious. Oh, this one's mackerel, I think. Wow, look at the crisscrossing, the marbly. <laughs> Is that what you use? Oh, the shrimp was a little traumatic because the chef came out and showed us the live shrimp to choose from. I wish he didn't do that because I don't need to see my food being alive before you eat it. And this last one is not bread, which I thought, it's egg. <laughs> and then this was dessert, which is a custard, very delicious custard. The next morning, we decided to head over to Sensoji Temple with another friend. This is the most popular temple in Tokyo. On the way to the main temple, there's all of these stalls that you can stop by and buy souvenirs. And then this is where you can actually enter the main temple area. There's a pagoda nearby as well. Another statue right near the entrance. Another perspective of the pagoda. And this is where you can draw your omikuji or your fortune. So you drop in 100 yen, you shake up this tin, and then you pick a rod that has a number on it. If you don't know what number it is, you can just find the corresponding character and grab your fortune. Here's mine, and I got a regular fortune, which is great! My two friends, they both got bad fortunes. And if you get a bad fortune, you're supposed to tie them up on this to tie your bad fortune away. So here are both of my friends tying away their fortunes so that their bad fortunes don't come true. And as you can see, there are a ton of other people who also got bad fortunes. And then we decided to actually go inside the main temple. This isn't an entrance fee, but it's customary to put in some money when you do go into a temple. The weather was beautiful, and oh my god, look at those kids at the bottom with their matching colored hats. And what's very unique about this temple is that instead of stamping, they'll actually do the calligraphy onto your notebook. 
However, because it is a religious stamp, you can only do it on specific notebook paper, which they also sell for around $5 USD. Oh, another statue with a bib. I don't know what animal this is supposed to be. And then for dinner, we decided to get some Japanese barbecue. Fun fact, it's actually right next to the spicy noodle place. <laughs> Here's the inside. Oh, Ayu, my beloved. We got a set of their meats. The last one is tongue, that's why it's a little bit rounded. Here is Jen cooking. Everybody say thank you, Jen. Thanks, Jen. Oh yeah, and things got on fire a little bit because it was greasy, but it's okay. The employee came and she took care of it. She was like, don't worry about it. And this is a night view from our hotel and you can now see Tokyo Tower lit up behind that building. The next morning, we decided to eat more, shop more. This was a very cute place to park your dog. I am struggling. Holy. Jen found this amazing udon place. It's so aesthetic. This is us waiting. I'm being an obnoxious tourist right there. When the restaurant is closed, they roll up this cloth on top of the rod that it's on to signify to customers that they are closed. This was part of the udon set that Jen got, so it comes with some sashimi, I don't know what that is, and tamago or egg omelette again. It also comes with tempura set, they love their tempura, and I believe these are mochi rice cakes? Along something along those lines, and then of course the udon. For me, I got a more meat-based udon, and you can see the bonito flakes just moving in the wind. Ooh, yummy. After lunch, we stopped by the new Team Lab Borderless exhibit. And the whole point of Team Lab is that they like to build experiential exhibits where there's no set path for you to follow and instead you're just supposed to explore everything on your own and all of these light projections you can touch it interact with it as you can see right here and the projections will change over time so even if you come back to the same room that you've been in before the projections are going to change and so it's going to be a brand new experience for you they also have these various rooms this is i, I dubbed it the light room because there's so many lights and you can walk through the different paths that are available and just really experience being in all of these lights. Oh, and the ground is also mirrored, so you're just fully encapsulated in all of these lights. They also had these fun bunnies and frogs. I don't know, but these frogs were like so funny. Oh, an ox! Hello, ox. My spirit animal. Some of the rooms are trippy, so if you are a little light sensitive, I recommend just being a bit careful as you walk through the exhibits. This one was a fun room where you can go to the back room and color in a turtle, an octopus, a fish, and then you scan it and then all of the scans go onto the wall. So this is everyone's drawings from throughout the day and you get to also keep the drawing as your own souvenir. This was a very beautiful room. It reminds me a lot of Pixar's Inside Out with all of the lights. And so I was like, this is definitely a core memory for me being inside this room. I don't know what I call this room, but like, look at it. Very trippy, but very amazing. And it just really shows you what you can do with light and darkness and different colors. This is a main room where a lot of people like to go to that middle and take photos. I didn't, I just did it on the side. And these are falling characters. So whatever character it is, after you touch it, a visual effect will happen which corresponds to the character that you touched. Another room just full of different art styles. It had a lot of birds. There's a peacock. That's not a bird, that's a tiger. Here's another room. The staff warned us that there might be sharp corners, so just be careful as you go through it because it is dark. And then this is the final room and they play music and have like a four minute show with all of these lights. It was very fun to watch the lights after a bit because they move so systematically. And then in my head, I wonder how much this cost because these lights are not cheap. For lunch, we stayed in the same mall that Team Labs is in called Aza Budai Hills. To be honest, the wait was very long. I recommend going elsewhere, but I mean the tonkatsu was great. It was just a very long wait. And then for the last morning, I decided to stop by Tokyo Tower. 
These statues are for children. They're guardians of children and it's supposed to keep children safe and protected. So as you walk towards Tokyo Tower, there's a bunch of other temples that you can stop by and gardens that you can see. I hope I'm going up some stairs. Oh, I remember this. So I walked up here because it was so colorful and beautiful, but it's a dead end. So you just have to walk all the way back. <laughs> and then this is the park next to Tokyo Tower. And then some random flowers that I just thought were very pretty. And here's Tokyo Tower. Thanks for coming to Japan with me.